Certainly will want to make an impression and make the final. Can't see Smarslick missing out on making the final now. No, this uh, semi-finals and this final are all really about Jack Holder and Jason Doyle, Robert Lambert, trying to make ground up with Martin Vashinik and Freddie Lindgren slipping up. There we are then. Semi-final number one, riders appearing out on track for you. Anders Thompson's had a much, much better evening and he'll be chuffed to bits to make the semi-final for the first time this year. Robert Lambert going along nicely, of course, finished second in Croatia, then had a poor round in the Naradovi, made the semi-finals in Prague, but um, uh, that's as far as he went. So um, uh, Lambert um, uh, looking to make uh, another final here in Tetro and uh, chose to go from the outside gate. Smarslik has been rock solid once again here this evening. Started sort of like with a bike set up, you suggest wasn't quite there and was working very hard for his points, but subsequently the latter qualifying races he looked much, much more comfortable. And I think he's uh, chuffed a bit to have that inside gate for this semi-final. So the lineup for you is the inside gate is uh, Bartosz Smarslik in red. Gate number two in blue is Anders Thompson. Gate three in white is Jason Doyle and Robert Lambert will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. And Chris, you've got to believe that Smarslik is going to make it, but can Lambert do something from the outside? Uh, of course he can. He's a racer and he's uh, made some really good decisions in the first turns, the back straight on opening lap. Uh, Thompson and Doyle finished their meetings. They're qualifying heats with race wins. So they've improved throughout the meeting. They have indeed. Anders Thompson uh, finished with a fine win last time in his qualifiers. And uh, that saw him safety through. As I say, Anders Thompson can take you by surprise. When he's in the mood, he really is quite a, quite a spoiler. So uh, you can't rule him out at all. And Jason Doyle, well, we know what he's all about. He will be giving it absolutely everything. So here we go then. Three races to go. Semi-final number one in the Bergring. Oh, big movement from Doyle. Got to be a red light. No, there isn't. Around the inside. He's capitalised there. Oh, wow, he's got away from that. No, Robert Lambert's yeah. packed up. Red lights are on. Had yeah. to happen, didn't it? Yeah. Had to happen. I thought he got away with that. I think if it had stayed at the back, I think uh, it would have been left. But... Uh, you, know, you could argue that actually he, he did yeah, penalise himself. He was last in the first turn, but... Referee changed his mind down the back straight when he yeah, saw him slip yeah, into second on place and the final was calling. <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, no real surprise with uh, Jason Doran being a, a touch impatient there on the start line. Yeah, he's just had a nibble at it. It was held yeah. for quite a while. The <laughs> argument there from the uh, rule book would be he's moving when the tapes go up, because if you look... He's just creeping forward. He is actually moving when the tape's got up. You have to be stationary. So uh, Craig Ackroyd really with the right decision there. Yeah, I don't think he was going to make it initially, though. I think you're right. I, I, I fancy that when he got into second place, the red lights didn't come on until the end of the back straight. So yeah. interesting moment there. And Craig Ackroyd um, uh, pulling them back. Jason Doyle will be on a warning for the uh, restart. Or, uh, he's more than aware of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't he's, need the warning. I know what I, I did. I, I think he knew that was coming, and uh, he's quite accustomed to it. He quite often carries a warning, Jason. But uh, that gate number three hasn't been very fruitful tonight. It's almost a gamble worth taking from gate three. He hasn't had a race win all night. Yeah. So um, uh, maybe a touch of good fortune required to uh, make the final from gate three this evening. Um, uh, so riders now back on their way with the. Uh, Clock ticking down on the infield. There it is, the uh, warning uh, board. And um, uh, Jason Doyle won't uh, need to be reminded too many times about that. But uh, as I say, he is going to be giving it his all. He'll be def desperate to make his third final of the year. Hasn't had the best of luck in the finals this year. But um, uh, if he were to make it tonight, he knows how to win here because he won here back in 2016. So uh, he has fond memories of the Burgering. So uh, the line-up then for uh, Heat uh, semi-final number one then. Bartosz Smarsik on the inside in red. Anders Thompson, gate number two in blue. Jason Doyle coming out of gate number three in white. And Robert Lambert off the outside in yellow. Second time of asking, of course. It's round number four in the SGP World Speedway Championship. We are in northeast Germany at Tetro. Bergring Arena. Three nights on, tapes are up and we're underway. 
It's a level break. Oh, Smartly gets there. Get oh, oh, look at Doyle oh. trudging up the inside. Here, Here comes Lambert. Lambert around the outside, neck and neck, with the championship leader. Smartly there, long tracking it down the back straight. Here comes Doyle now. Anton Doyle Anton. coming through in his second place. What a move from the Australian. Right place there. What an opportunity move there. He's on the warning. Oh, Smartly nearly off the bike. It's all going on here in semi final number one. I tell you what, Robert Lambert must wonder what he's got to do. There was just so much going on in that opening lap. I'll tell you what, Thompson hasn't given up. He's riding wider than the two in front of him. They're riding a little bit defensive. Don't want anybody up the inside, but look at Thompson. He's coming on strong. Round the outside, Anders Thompson, they're into the final lap now. Uh, Smart League looks set, it, set for the final for sure. Jason Dahl there hanging on by the skin of his teeth. Anders Thompson now clouting the fence down the back straight. One last blast from the Danish rider. Smart League's through, and so is Doyle. What a semi final that is. Track conditions deteriorating, catching the riders out. Robert Lambert, wow, how did he stay on board on the first couple of laps? Fair play to Jason Doyle. He didn't really deserve that, but he did get in the right place. And he's through, he's through to the final. Got a feel for Thompson and Lambert. Smarslick through to the final. He's joined by Jason Doyle. Third final of the year. And as Thompson will be a touch disappointed, and so will Lambert. Of course they will. But uh, there's no stopping um, uh, Smarslick. No, there's no stopping him. Lambert pays the price for almost making too good a start from gate four. Got himself trapped on the outside. Had to race Smarslick down the back straight. Doyle, meanwhile, has really clattered into the corner. Got himself <laughs> up the inside. Very determined there on Anders Thompson. Moves him out of the way and says, right, OK, there's some space here. But this is where Lambert gets caught out. He's overcommitted. He's got to be. He's got to keep going. He's got to make a run, try and get around the outside of Smarslick. There's the look from Smarslick. Knows he's coming, runs in hard, doesn't move out. And that's when poor Robert Lambert finds himself middle of the track. There's no traction there. Doyle up the inside. Thompson around the outside. And I'll tell you what, Thompson kept plugging, plugging away, kept using the dirt line. And uh, Jason Doyle was beginning to feel a little bit vulnerable towards the end. Indeed he was. Robert Lambert there, just in no man's land. Look at that from Bartosz Smarslik, both feet off the footrest. Likewise there for uh, Anders Thompson and uh, Jason Doyle having a little look over his shoulder. Smarslik through to the final. Fourth final of the year for the championship leader. Work done so far. Looking good. Going along very nicely. And with Freddie Lingren missing out, a massive opportunity for Smarslik to stretch his lead in the championship. Jack Holder's out in semi-final two. And uh, for Jack Holder, an opportunity to close in to be second in the world championship chase um, uh, before going on to Gorjov in a fortnight's time. What an opportunity for the Australian now in semi-final number two. Track's unpredictable. With that water on the track, with the extra wheel spin, the bikes were really reacting very violently. And you described it spot on with Lambert. He just caught in the middle of the track. It's greasy, and they went either side of him. You've got to feel for him because he was totally committed down the back straight. Had just, to be. Had to be. It's just unfortunate. It couldn't slow down. It would no. have happened either way. So uh, got to feel for him there. But dramatic stuff in semi-final number one. Semi-final number two's got a bit to uh, live up to, you know. So um, uh, see it being just as good. Yeah, uh, every chance of that. So um, uh, Jack Holder there off the outside this time. Bewley uh, had no hesitation with his draw to uh, elect uh, going from the inside. What an opportunity is for Jack Holder now. Dan Bewley on the inside in red. Then gate number two in uh, blue is Leon Madsen. Gate number three in white, Kim Nielsen. His first ever semi-final. Terrific effort from him and Jack Holder. So consistency once again from Holder off the outside in yellow. But uh, in the context of the championship, as we uh, rapidly approaching the midway point in uh, Gorjov uh, in two weeks' time for Jack Holder after such a smashing run, if he can make the final again, then uh, there's every chance he could actually leapfrog. Um, uh, Freddie Lingman and finish uh, the night in second place in the championship. Yeah, and you said it earlier before the meeting, Dan Bewley's got to start converting yes. these good performances, these semi-finals, into finals and championship points. Yes, because he's more than quick enough to actually put pressure on the championship leader, that's for sure. Um, uh, he was dominant through the heats on 13 points out of 15 in Prague seven days ago, um, but failed to make the semi-final. Similarly in the Narodovi in uh, Warsaw, so... 
Uh, Bewley in the box seat on the inside. Semi-final number two in Tetero. Oh, my goodness. Drama. Oh, oh no. Can you believe this? Oh, he's going to be... Uh, he's going to run out of time. Can you believe this? Unbelievable. Has that bike just given up the ghost? I don't know. Just trying to start it makes him think that... You can actually stall these bikes if you're not concentrating, but... Seems like that may be the case. Oh, well, that's a huge blow for Dan Bewley. Got a feel for him there. Uh, he's best man on track towards the end of the meeting. Oh, such a disappointment for Dan Bewley. Ridden so well tonight. Did he just stall the bike? Because it's running now. I'm not quite sure what happened there. We didn't see it, did we, actually, the moment the bike stopped. But clearly... It oh, was running, and, it, and he rode it back. I'd ask for my money back, not being able to see Dan Bewley now. Oh, that's so disappointing. desperate. We were just talking about him making finals, but uh, um, uh, down to three now, semi-final number two. Tapes are up, and we're underway. Smashing start from Jack Holder on the outside. Fars himself to the inside in the first corner. Oh, Leo Nielsen's Madsen coming. now, Kim Nielsen up the inside of Leo Madsen, forcing his way through into second place. Smart move from Kim Nielsen, set for his first ever final. It's his first semi-final. Will he now make that into a final? What a night that will be for him. But for Jack Holder, this is exactly what he needed to do. It's tough out there now. Track conditions have deteriorated. Kim Nielsen coming on really strong in second place. Liam Madsen in third, but for Holder, he looks like a finalist to me. Yeah, he certainly does. I tell you what, Liam Madsen was just far too cautious the way he was riding the bike on the opening lap. And uh, Kim Nielsen taking full advantage of that, makes his first semi-final tonight, makes his first race win tonight. Looks like he's going to make his first final. Fantastic. What? Yeah, fantastic achievement for, for Jack Holder. The consistency at Grand Prix is staggering. Fabulous performance from him. He's through to another final. Should have won in the Nanadobi, but he's made three consecutive finals now. And he's a man in top form. And he's going to keep this championship chase tight because he's going to leapfrog Freddie Lingwin. Is every chance of that now? And Jack Holder's through with Kim Nielsen. Well done to Kim Nielsen. Through by the skin of his te teeth on seven points, and he makes his first final. Wow, that's brilliant. Leon Madsen misses out, and Dan Bewley. Well, your heart breaks for Dan Bewley there, that's for sure. When he was in such fine form, did he just stall the bike, or did uh, something? The fuel in chaps not on, or he's yeah, maybe or he's the fuel not bike, on. One of the two. Yes. Uh, an unfortunate scenario. Let's have a look, see exactly what happens here. It just packs up. It just packs up. He didn't stall it. Ah, oh, that's yeah, just that's such bad luck. Maybe it was fuel taps. I didn't see him reaching down for the fuel taps, but uh, Jack Holder, outside gate, comes across beautifully. Leon Madsen felt uncomfortable in the first turn. Rode very, very cautious. There he's uncomfortable. He knows that there's a few ruts out there going to catch him out. Rides very cautiously into turn three. Kim Nielsen says, hey, look, this is, my, uh, this is my time. This is my chance to make the very first final of my career. And away he goes. Brilliant stuff. Yep. But uh, nonetheless, um, uh, Jack Holder through to a third consecutive final and riding supremely well.